The American economy is based on the speculation in the share market. Have we built a new road, a new rail, a high-speed rail, a new hospital, a new university? No. Just garbage to show for the next generation. Wars and disasters that the US forced on other nations. $5.1 trillion in corporate buybacks. The stock market is a bubble. The debt is a bubble, and treasuries are going down the tubes. All-time highs in the stock market, nothing but a non-stop grind higher low tax environment, low interest rates, Fed bond buyback binge, corporate buyback bonanza, earnings growth the list goes on. When things go south, the federal governments will print money, and then they will print more. Look at the Weimar Republic as one example, Venezuela, as another. We will see inflation, perhaps after a bit of deflation, but currency will quickly become worthless as inflation skyrockets. This is the perfect recipe for the next Great Depression, Venezuela, here we come. Markets are always at all-time highs before the crash. Credit card debt and delinquency at the highest levels since 2008. Car loan delinquency at an all-time high. Commercial property bubble about to pop, empty properties everywhere, but let's just keep on partying like it's 1999. Either way, though, total global collapse is coming. I hope those of you that have something to lose prepare accordingly. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. Stocks closed out November on a high note with the hope of a trade deal fueling Wall Street. But is this warranted? And are consumers really doing as well as the mainstream would have us believe? Peter Schiff appeared on RT Boom Bust last week to talk about it. He said it's all a house of cards and it's going to come crashing down on American consumers. Peter started out the interview talking about Hong Kong. The territory became a focal point in trade talks between the US and China after President Trump signed the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act supporting pro-democracy protesters. Peter said US criticism is a bit hypocritical. If you look at the index of economic freedom that the Heritage Foundation puts out every year, Hong Kong ranks number one. Today, it's the freest economy in the world. The United States ranks 12th on that list. So, I'm more concerned about the freedom of our own people. So, rather than worrying about the freest people in the world, how about if our leaders try to find a way to make Americans freer? One of the Boom Bust hosts pointed out that President Trump has said he is trying to broker a deal where America does much better than the Chinese. She asked how we can expect to get a deal done when the president doesn't seem to be interested in a fair deal. Peter said pushing for an advantage is just the nature of negotiating. But he said he doesn't really think Trump is trying to get a deal done. Trump just wants the stock market to go up. And as long as the stock market is going up, he couldn't care less about a deal with China. Maybe if the stock market really started to tank, then he might feel some type of pressure to actually deliver an agreement. But as long as he can make the market go up by talking about the prospects of a deal, then that's all Trump wants. As far as the US stock markets go, Peter said there are a lot of things that should be causing them to go down, but only one thing causing them to go up, the Federal Reserve. For a while, people were worried about rate hikes. Nobody is concerned about rate hikes. The Fed has taken all rate hikes off the table. The Fed has made it clear that the only direction rates can go down. They're either going to stay the same, or they're going to go down. And QE4 is now on autopilot into perpetuity. So, that's what the markets want. They know they're never going to have another rate hike, and they're going to have money printing as far as the eye can see, and so that's what's driving stocks. And I guess that's going to continue to drive stocks until something causes that to change. And something is going to happen because the US is headed for a worse economic disaster than the one we had in 2008, and there's no way this is good for stocks. The boom bust hosts pointed out that stocks are going up despite a continuing downtrend in earnings. Peter said that's not the only factor markets are ignoring. He said in some ways, the bad news is good news because it keeps the Fed in play. Meanwhile, mainstream pundits keep telling us the US consumer has never been in better shape. Peter said the opposite is exact. The consumer is wholly levered up. He has record amounts of debt. And the only reason he can spend is that the Fed is keeping rates low enough so that credit continues to flow despite the lack of legitimate savings to finance it. So, this whole house of cards is going to come tumbling down, and the consumer is going to be right in the center of that. Will consumers continue to spend during the upcoming holiday shopping season? As long as they can borrow it, they'll spend it. 
The question is, can they pay it back? Overall, Peter said he thinks holiday sales will likely be disappointing again. Brick and mortar retail companies are struggling, and we see high vacancy rates in the retail sector. A lot of Americans are doing everything they can to squeeze every penny out of the dollars they're borrowing. So, they're shopping online and looking for the best deal. And I guess that's going to continue. But remember, a lot of the stuff we're buying, and probably almost all of the things we're buying is imported. We're not making it. It's made in other countries. So, we're buying it on a national credit card as well as an individual credit card. So, whatever we spend just means more significant trade deficits, and that means the US economy is in an even more precarious position following holiday shopping than before. The interview wrapped up with a discussion about the house of cards will tumble down on consumers. Poland repatriating its gold and the continued global central bank gold buying spree. I think the central bankers are in a position to know a monetary crisis is imminent. That doesn't mean it's going to start tomorrow. Of course, it could. But whether it launches next month, or next year, or sometime in the next several years, they need to have gold. I mean, gold ownership is going to be vital to preserving confidence in your currency. And you have to back your money by something real, not by somebody else's paper, and that's gold. I think what Poland is doing is a trend that we see that it's not just that you want to own gold, but you want to hold possession of your own gold. You don't want to trust a third party with your gold. Peter Schiff is always spot on, because he dearly cares about the United States. He cares and understands why we became a debtor nation in the mid-80s, and he cares about the debt load, and its future implications. We cannot control the stimulus and the debt-fueled growth in earnings and GDP. He is on record for criticizing Greenspan and Bush more so than anyone else in history while being a Republican. Consumer debt outside housing is up 1.5 trillion since 2008, and he understands that. After the last financial crash, it should have been game over for the Fed, instead, it has been game on through the Obama and Trump years. The Fed is injecting so much money into the economy, and I wonder if this is the season where the economy will really be run into the ground. The way the economy is and the way it should be is very different. In terms of trade, the president doesn't have the authority to regulate commerce, which is a function of Congress, Article 1 Section 8 of the Constitution. So much for Donald Trump taking his oath of office seriously. Unfortunately, the US government has a do-what-I-say approach to foreign policy and routinely destabilizes governments that don't go along with its agenda. Free trade is based on volunteerism. It allows for greater possibilities and greater creativity than managed or fair trade. There are people that do want an upper hand in a trade deal. Most, however, would prefer deals that are win-win to create real prosperity. Ask yourself why bankers can loan money they print at no cost to themselves and rake in trillions of interest payments on mortgage and car and credit card loans. While grandmother's hard-earned money for which she traded her labors and things saleable cannot be loaned at market interest and is even no longer wanted by the banks. And ask yourself why Americans should continue to support a banking system whereby through the rise of stock buybacks and stock market manipulation courtesy of Wall Street and the Fed 77% of compensation for S&P CEOs comes from stock-based options and buybacks, making them the wealthiest class on earth? It's time to not only ban stock buybacks. It's 100 years past due to end the Fed. It certainly has ended America as the land of opportunity. While middle-class workers, savers continue to get sodomized. The banks, institutions own 80% of many of these stocks, and the analysts work for them. So they report one half the earnings as previous quarters, and a dozen analysts upgrade them and tell everyone to buy. We are in an earnings recession. If you're a bank or a day scalper, I guess you're happy. For everyone else, this is a bad deal. Stock buybacks have kept the market solvent. How many Americans have $1,000 and less in the bank? Not many. Ask Gerald Salente. No one has money to spare. Households lie from credit card to credit card. The consumer is stressed to the max. America can't afford another QE, but it is still getting one. That will definitely be its last QE. 2020 will be a scary year of uncertainty, if not a depression. The economy is nothing but a giant fraud. Money is an extension of ownership. Ownership is an extension of theft, numbers, numbers everywhere, the false equivalency, the number of the beast. 
The ruling class in America is ready to pop the bubble. They are ready. The middle class will be flattened in the next economic downturn. QE is just another get-rich-quick scheme for millionaires and billionaires that works perfectly. No late-night infomercials required, just a printing press and a willingness to destroy working-class Americans forever. QE just makes the rich even richer, the working class is more destitute and the lazy poor more comfortable. The plan is easy. Number 1. Print money to buy the debts. Number 2. Dollar loses the value. Number 3. Replace the old dollar with new dollar. Number 4. Dollar will not be in the FMI basket. Number 5. The US will become the third world. Number 6. This is all. Number 7. Game over. Venezuela, here we come. This was the Atlantis report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.